But before that, Glasgow is preparing for world leaders to discuss climate change at the COP26 summit in just over a week's time. The environmental crisis will have an impact on all of our lives, and one of the biggest could be the food that we eat. According to a study by the University of Oxford, food accounts for over a quarter of global greenhouse gas emissions. In the first of a series of reports, Ravina Gatura looks at how we may have to adapt our food production to be more environmentally friendly. In just over a week's time, COP26 gets underway, where world leaders will come together to talk about how to combat climate change. The steps that we take will impact every area of our lives, from how we move about to the ways in which we produce our food. But have we got that appetite for change? If we want to make our food more sustainable, change has to start at places like this. I've come to Croxton Farm in Stibbard near Fakenham in Norfolk to meet farmer James Runciman. He's been looking after cattle for as long as he can remember, an industry he loves being a part of, but an industry facing criticism. So what's all the beef? Out of all types of farming, rearing animals has the biggest impact on our climate. Experts say livestock are responsible for almost 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But James says he's worked hard to make his farm more sustainable. We're grazing ancient permanent pasture. We're capturing carbon. It's all very well telling us we've got to get rid of livestock. But if we're going to replace this, this brilliant protein with imported or man-made proteins, that is going to have a bigger effect than producing beef that is natural and sustainable. Sustainable food production is something that's on the menu at the John Innes Centre in Norwich. Here we have purple sprouting broccoli, this particular variety, and these do not require the usual environmental cues to get them to come to produce that actual floral head that we eat. Growing food in our changing climate is a challenge, but scientists here are looking at ways of developing crops in contained environments using vertical farming so they're healthier and resistant to fluctuations in our weather. We can look at producing the same foods that we're eating at the moment, we just have to be smarter in the way that we produce them. So we need to look at producing food with minimal inputs, but actually also can we produce that food closer to home? And by using those contained environments, does that actually give us a stable, reliable food production? So meat and two veg are likely to still be on our plates in years to come, as long as we focus on greener ways of production. One of those hoping to get that message to future generations is Matt Willer. And this has spent all summer growing. He swapped pens and pencils for garden utensils after giving up his job as a teacher to help build allotments at secondary schools instead. Among the 20 projects he's involved in is this one at Thorpe St Andrews School in Norwich. This is about inspiring the next generation to at least be aware of where their food comes from because if we can all grow food like this it will make the world much more sustainable. And that's the example we're trying to set, reducing our carbon footprint. And so from the charity's point of view this is the future. And it's certainly given children here plenty of food for thought. It's really a good place to learn about all the vegetables here and all the fruits as well. We've taken produce from the allotment to make food, which is really nice. And then you are more conscious of what you're growing and you're eating and you know where it's come from. If we grow it here, that reduces the amount of carbon footprint we're producing by a huge amount. So if we can grow everything locally, then that's brilliant. What people choose to eat will always be personal choice, but it's the small and simple steps we take now that can make a big difference to those who pick up the baton in the future. Ravina Gatora, ITV News.